Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and today we're going to be getting all cosy with Nubia's fresh new super deluxe feature packed gaming smartphone, the Red Magic 8 Pro. This premium shiny powerhouse boasts a mighty 6.8 inch AMOLED display with a selfie camera cunningly hidden beneath that glass, as well as Qualcomm's latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset, upgraded cooling tech and all kinds of fancy gaming bollocks to keep you right on top of your game. The Red Magic 8 Pro goes on sale globally from February and you can expect the UK pricing to start at around £600 to £700 depending on tax and all that usual guff. So enough chatter, let's whip the Red Magic 8 Pro on out the box, take you on a full on tour of the hardware, the software, the gaming features and really test out that performance. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So first up, what do you get in this lovely shiny silver box? Well, first up, I'm absolutely loving the manga star shenanigans that's going on all around this box. My inner weeb is vibrating intensely. I've got to say, though, I'm not entirely sure that motorbiking about the place with hair this long is a good idea. Should probably have it tied up or stuffed inside of a giant helmet or something. Remember, safety first, kiddies. I also like how the box promises me I will win more games. Not that that's going to be bloody difficult. So what do you actually get in this lovely little treasure trove? Well, there's one Red Magic 8 Pro. Not just one or two QR codes, oh no, we got four of the buggers. Got a power adapter, a two pin effort in this case, cause I imported from Asia. Got a lovely bright red USB cable. And you've got yourself a rigid transparent case to keep the Red Magic 8 Pro semi protected at least. And that right there is basically everything, nice and straightforward. And also bundled in the box with the Red Magic 8 Pro was this wee doll thingy. I believe it's supposed to be Mora, who is the Red Magic AR assistant. And there she is, folks. And let me tell you, my cat is eyeing this thing up very intently. So first of all, let's check out the design of the Red Magic Air Pro. And I gotta say, this thing is an absolute slab. It kind of reminds me of a fatter version of Sony's Xperia smartphones. It's certainly very angular. There is nary a curve to be seen here. And we're talking a proper heft as well. This thing feels as heavy as an iPhone 14 Pro Max. But you've got to love how that display fills up the entire front end of this smartphone and that is in large part thanks to the under display selfie camera which certainly at a quick glance you would swear isn't even there. The Red Magic 8 Pro sports what Nubia terms hardcore mech style. You've got a metal frame and an all metal back as well and the design seems pretty subtle for a gaming smartphone certainly until the light catches it just so and all those little bits of flare on that arse end are all lit up. But certainly compared with something like Isus's ROG phones, it is a much more plain finish. And if you were fretting because you thought Nubia had left off any RGB disco lights on the Red Magic 8 Pro, well, no worries. They're a bit more subtle than on some gaming smartphones, but uh, they're still present. And these are fully customizable as well, so you can get them flashing whatever color you want while you're gaming, when you've got media playing. This right here is the Dark Blade Warrior model of the Red Magic 8 Pro, but you can also grab it in a Spectre Warrior edition with more memory and double the storage. You've got the usual little design touches here, like the red highlighting for that game space slider, and an increasingly rare 3.5mm headphone jack, which thankfully is still found on a lot of gaming blowers. But yeah, as the Red Magic 8 Pro is a 6.8mm monster without any curves to speak of, definitely a lot more comfortable to clutch and use two-handed, which if you are going to be just mostly gaming on this thing, not really an issue to be fair. And of course, there's no water resistance to speak of here, as made abundantly obvious by the fact that there's two whopping great vents in the sides of this thing. So now let's have a shifty at the software and running on the Red Magic 8 Pro, you've got the latest, freshest Android version 13 with Red Magic OS slathered on top version 6.0. And once you actually activate features like the app straw, which seems inordinately hard to pull up for some reason when you're using this bloody thing at one handed, you have to sort of swipe above the widgets and other apps. Goodness sakes. Once you actually activate that app straw, you've got a fairly stock Android experience here with the likes of the Google Discover feed. You can drag down that notifications bar from anywhere. But Red Magic OS does have its own vibe. So as you can see here, the notification section, for instance, lots and lots of toggles. You've got some custom widgets, for instance. This one's my favorite. Tells you exactly how much of your life you're wasting playing games. You can also manually change up the screen refresh rate on the fly with a handy little desktop widget. And lots of other bonus bits, including a one-handed mode, which somewhat distressingly requires two hands to activate. And no matter how hard I try, how many different ways I try it, I just cannot get this to work at all. <laughs> I definitely prefer the personalized settings section, which allows you to customize pretty much every bit of the UI. So for instance, you've got a variety of themes that you can choose from. Some of them are quite heavily targeted at gamers. This one right here even features our girl Mora, who pops up right there on your lock screen. 
Otherwise, there's plenty of other papers to choose from. We've also got a wide variety of always on displays, including plenty featuring Mora again, in case you fancy having a wink and silently flap her mouth at you. An insider here is also where you customize those RGB lights on the back, so you can actually use them as notification lights. You can have them alert you to incoming calls. You can have them flashing when the phone is charging, all kinds of stuff, and it's all completely customizable, so you can select the effect and the colors. And when it's time to get your game on, all you need to do is hit that game space slider. Oh, I'm holding it upside down. And this acts as a kind of lobby so you can fast access all of the games you have installed on the Red Magic 8 Pro and it's packed to the tits with all kinds of extra features. So for instance, you can check out all the various tools that are available or plugins as the Red Magic 8 Pro terms them and exactly which games they are compatible with. And from within game space, you can also conjure up Mora. Hello Mora, how are you doing today? I take it that means all right, just adjusting her Y fronts there. Oh, she's got a very own Red Magic 8 Pro, which she seems to like very much. Oh, she's a bit sleepy after all that frantic rubbing. It looks like you can set up your own personal profile here in Mora Care, so whether you're a company employee, what your birthday is, 2000, I wish. It looks like you can actually project an AR version of Mora into your real life environment as well to take a, a picture of her. You can even uh, spin her about, get her from every angle. Way. Right, you can even have her doing different pauses. I like this one where she's sitting on her own head. And apparently you can also do some live streaming where you use Mora as your avatar. Would certainly get more clicks than if I just used my own bald mug. And in case you were wondering, this is what happens when it is your birthday. Mora pops up with a lovely little cake, which she then apparently just drops. Anyway, that's enough dicking around with Mora. Now it's time to actually get some gaming on the go on the Red Magic 8 Pro. You'll be relieved to hear, no doubt. And when you do want to get online, you've got full Wi-Fi 7 support here, courtesy of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset that runs the show, even though Wi-Fi 7 isn't technically a thing yet, but whatever. And as for the storage, buckets of storage for downloading, even massive almighty titles like Genshin Impact. This model right here has 256 gigs of UFS 4.0 storage, so nice and nippy. Genshin downloaded in no time whatsoever. Or you could also double that storage to 512 if you get the Billy Big Bollocks model. Now Qualcomm only recently launched its Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset and it is an absolute monster. Geekbench scores, as you can see there, the multi-core score topping 5,000. It reliably consistently does that. That's helped no doubt by the fact that it's backed in this model by 12 gigs of DDR5 RAM. So you probably won't be massively shocked to learn that the likes of Genshin Impact, the most demanding titles out there on Android, do play with a perfect frame rate, even when you jack the graphic settings all the way up to the maximum levels. When you're in a game like Genshin Impact or anything ready, you can drag out the Red Magic Game Space menu like so. This includes a number of different performance modes that you can choose from. So when you are playing more demand and fair like Genshin Impact, I recommend sticking it on the max level, which is Rise. Otherwise, stuff that isn't quite so demanding, you can just chuck it on Eco in order to preserve battery life. And you've got the usual massive selection of other bonus features tucked away in here. Lots of stuff to play around with, including stopwatches, crosshairs, make those different shapes and colors. You can hook up a gamepad, record the action, all kinds of shenanigans. And in that Rise mode, certainly Genshin Impact played without any stumbles in that frame rate. I didn't notice any slowdown at any point, no matter how long I played this bloody thing. And that is facilitated by the new and improved Ice 11 cooling system that Nubi has chucked inside of the Red Magic 8 Pro, which includes a Shirk Fin turbo fan that hits up to 20,000 RPM when it is maxed out. This fan is automatically activated whenever you load up a game like Genshin Impact, but once again, you can manually turn it on and off within those game menu settings. There is also a desktop widget, so you can turn it on at any point and choose between Eco and Full Blast modes. And if you jump on into the smartphone settings, you can also play with the fan options in here, including the ability to automatically start it when fast charging or when the game is entered. When it all kicks off and that fan is going full pelt, it certainly gets pretty loud. Loud enough to annoy the piss out of anyone who's trying to get some kit beside you if you like to do your gaming in the wee hours. But thankfully though, it does seem very effective at keeping the Red Magic 8 Pro cool, which is its main job of course. You've got a pair of vents either side of this smartphone. On one side, air is sucked in and then it is spaffed out of the opposite side. And thankfully, the air that is guffed out of this thing isn't so hot it will roast your flesh. It's just warm. In fact, it's actually quite nice if you live here in Blighty and you can't actually afford to put the heating on. 
And it's not just that turbo fan that's keeping the Red Magic 8 Pro cool. This thing also has graphene layers. It's got an upgraded vapor chamber, copper foils, pretty much bloody everything. And as well as that Snapdragon chipset, the Red Magic 8 Pro also boasts a separate Red Core 2 chip, which controls many of the dedicated gaming features. So for instance, like many dedicated gaming smartphones, you've got a pair of touch responsive shoulder buttons here on the edge. These are very easy to set up through that in-game menu. You can have them to work either with a single push or with a long push, a double push, whatever you fancy. And they work really well in-game. They're certainly very responsive, although there is no haptic feedback here, unfortunately, unlike what you get with the likes of the ROG phone. But the actual smartphone haptics are pretty good, courtesy of a built-in dual X-axis linear motor. As for that 6.8 inch AMOLED display, well, absolutely no complaints, certainly from a gaming perspective, that's for damn sure. It's big, it's bold, it's bright, it's perfectly flat as well, no curved edges, so ideal for gaming. And you get a full view experience courtesy of the selfie camera, which is actually hidden underneath the glass. No notches or little orifices or anything to speak of to get in the way. And sure, that selfie cam isn't completely undetectable. There is a teeny wee circle around the lens where you'll notice that the colour tones are ever so slightly off compared with the rest of the display. Just a little bit darker, but mostly you do have to go looking for it to actually detect it. This is certainly very impressive technology indeed. And that gargantuan screen is also perfectly responsive to all your pokes, your swipes and whatnot, with effectively zero latency as well. So your fast-paced action titles, your online competitive efforts like Call of Duty, definitely well suited to the Red Magic 8 Pro. And this blower also boasts a stereo speaker setup. Those speakers are housed on the top and bottom edges of the smartphone and they pump out some crisp, clear, very powerful sound. You've got full Snapdragon sound certification on here, DTSX Ultra support as well. So I was quite happy to get game and just using the stereo speaker setup. Otherwise, you can plug in a headset using that 3.5mm headphone jack and you've got Bluetooth 5.3 streaming support as well. As for the battery tech, well, the Red Magic 8 Pro is a bit of a big bugger, so it's no massive shock that Nubia has managed to stuff an epic size 6,000 mAh cell into that enormous frame. So that's on par with the very best gaming handsets out there, and I found this delivered around five full hours of Genshin Impact action, even when, again, I maxed out the graphics settings, I had this thing running on that Rise highest performance mode. I had the fan running full pelt and everything as well, so definitely good returns off that thing. And if you just want to use it, you know, as a smartphone as well, you'll happily get a full day of life. No matter what you're up to, using that camera non-stop streaming, lots of media, anything your lovely little heart desires. And even if you do absolutely drain the Red Magic 8 Pro, well, no worries because you've got 165 watt fast charging support when you bung a cable in its bottom. So that means you'll get a full charge from empty in about 13 minutes. But yeah, that USB-C port is unfortunately housed here on the bottom edge of the smartphone. There's no edge mounted port, so you can't really get gaming and charge it up at the same time. It's just a bit awkward. So you will, yes, have to actually put the smartphone down for those 13 minutes and go off and do something else with your day. Perhaps relay your feelings to a loved one on how much you appreciate them or compose a haiku or I don't know, whatever. And then last up, there's the camera tech. It's not a particularly exciting setup. You've got a 50 megapixel Samsung GN5 sensor for your primary camera. That's backed by basic ultra wide angle and macro snappers. You've got the usual selection of camera modes available, including full pro controls if you want to manually adjust the likes of the white balance, the ISO levels, etc. You've also got a dedicated night mode and a portrait mode. It's just a very small selection of sample shots that I snapped around the homestead over the course of about 24 hours if you're particularly interested. And if you want to shoot video, you do have the option of ramping it all the way up to 8K resolution. What I'm particularly interested in is that 16 megapixel selfie shooter, however, because it is housed under the display and quite often these selfie cameras do turn out to be, for want of a better word, pretty cack. And yeah, the Red Magic 8 Pro in really breaking that convention, to be fair. Everything looks a little bit misty, not quite as crisp and clear as what you would get with a standard selfie camera. And it's the same story when you're shooting video as well, up to full HD resolution supported by that selfie camera. Everything looks a little bit foggy and hazy as if the lens was being troubled with condensation. Uh, so it should be fine for some basic low res streaming, but not much more than that. So there you have it, my lovelies. That in a nutshell is the Red Magic 8 Pro, an absolute powerhouse packed with some very clever gaming features, not quite as full on premium as the likes of the Asus ROG phone, although this thing certainly has it beaten in the beefcake sticks. 
But anyway, it'd be great to hear your thoughts on the Red Magic Air Pro down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and dig that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.